Good day to you, one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins. Oh, that's not my branded mug. Uh, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Today, I'm talking about a really sensitive and delicate subject. Um, the situation with Matty Healy from the 1975 being banned from Malaysia. The topic of today's episode really is, does activism have a place in the music industry? Or should you just keep your mouth shut and play your songs? These are two of the questions that I'll be asking. Looking forward to the debate. How about you guys? I expect so. Justin Hawkins rides again. 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 So, Matty Healy from the 1975 has been banned from Kuala Lumpur after he kissed his bass player Ross on stage. Uh, on the mouth, presumably. And then he went on a rant lambasting the uh, Malaysian government and their anti-LGBT laws. Subsequently, the government of Malaysia cancelled the entire Good Vibes Festival um, that he was headlining at, um, including all the shows by the other artists the following day. And one of those artists that got pulled was The Strokes. Um, so anyway, this is a sensitive topic for me to be covering on this music-based channel for many reasons. We have human rights, race, sexuality, religion uh, and politics all conversing in one place. Um, topics that are nuanced and close to people's hearts, obviously. Um, I invite you to watch this with an open mind and an open heart um, and with the intention of, you know, learning more or discussing or debating it in a sensible way in the comments here. Anyway, I'm going to try and look at this situation from the perspective of a touring artist. Um, if you're an artist aligning yourself with a cause close to your heart and your fans, what's the best way to do it? Um, is speaking from your heart and in the moment good enough? Um, do you need to be smarter than that? Um, no disrespect to Matty Healy. I'm, I'm a huge Matty Healy enthusiast. Anyway, he's been praised by many over here in the UK uh, for standing up for LGB, LGBTQ uh, rights. However, many of the LGBTQ Malaysians have come out saying that he's done more damage than good. At first you think, how could that be? You know, he's raising awareness. Um, but today, my producer has endeavoured to find the perspectives of multiple people, including Malaysians themselves, who Matty was seemingly trying to stand up for. And what can we learn from this? I'm going to watch the video and react accordingly. In the only way I know how to do, honestly, and with an open heart. And I urge you to do the same. Okay, so here's, here's the rant itself. I'm going to put rant in inverted commas. Okay. I feel bad for you guys. I made a mistake. When we were booking shows, I wasn't looking into it and then I do not see the point of inviting the 1975 to a country and then telling us who we can have sex with and I'm sorry if that offends you and you're religious okay I mean it looks a little bit clumsy at the moment this is the first time I've watched this video <laughs> but your government are a bunch of fucking weirds. Okay. I'm not even sure if that's a word you're supposed to use anymore anyway. Hard to, I could fully expect to get lambasted for using that sort of language in the first place. I don't care anymore. If you push, I'm going to push back. I'm not in the f***ing mood. I'm not in the f***ing mood. If you're filming this... This is actually a rant, isn't it? It's a proper one. TikTok, I'm not in the f***ing mood anymore. Unfortunately, you don't get a set of loads of uplifting songs because I'm f***ing furious. And that's not fair on you, because you're not representative of your government. Because you are young people, and I'm sure a lot of you are gay, and progressive, and cool. So I pulled the show yesterday. I pulled this show yesterday, and we had a conversation, and we said, you know what? We can't let the kids down because they're not the government. But I've done this before. I've gone to a country where it's a f***ing, I don't know what it f***ing is, ridiculous. F***ing ridiculous to tell people what they can do with that and that. And if you want to invite me here to do a show, you can f*** off. God, so I can right. So this is we're going to see some reaction to this from from other folks, but initially it looks like a classic 
doing the right thing in the wrong way kind of vibe? Could it be that? You can ban me, but I've done this before and it doesn't feel good. All right, we got to go. We just got banned from Kuala Lumpur. I'll see you later. So it feels like he's genuinely angry. I mean, some people are saying that they supposedly signed a contract uh, with the promoter which stated that they accepted the rules and regulations in place. I've actually played in Kuala Lumpur before and, and you know, I think, but I did it in a later part of my career. It wasn't like when I was, I wouldn't be, you know, drinking. <laughs> it was when I was a sober individual. It wasn't that long ago. I think it was 2018 maybe. Or well, maybe it's a little bit earlier, but anyway, we we went there and there were some. Um, I was obliged to observe certain certain rules regarding what I wore. Like I, the the uh, they told me to put something underneath my open fronted cat suit. Um, so I did that. I wasn't um, privy to any contract being signed, but maybe a represent a representation signed it on their behalf. And I think a lot of the time when you go around and you're a touring entity and you're a singer and you're young and you're in the moment and you're, you're you know enjoying the the lifestyle you aren't always aware of the stuff that's mandated in the countries that you're going to and you know there's there's definitely like faux pas that you can commit just by not knowing that what they used to do in the olden days is you'd have like a, somebody traveling with you to make sure you can navigate the the um the potential faux pas minefield of, of visiting other cultures um, and you'd have a person there that would show you how to behave and also try and educate you about what's what's culturally what the cultural backdrop is of your visit in the first place so that you don't get it wrong and, and upset everybody <laughs> you know, an ambassador like an international ambassador that's what that's what they used to send you out with especially if you're a, a major label artist you'd have that um and I guess what's happened here is it seems like they've booked this show and then he's shown up and then he's suddenly, for whatever reason, he's been made aware of the the governmental policies regarding the LGBTQ community. And he's, he's tried to reverse out, but he's done it too late. He's, um, it's too late. Um, so I think they can... I mean, obviously... <laughs> Anecdotally, I think they're probably going to get sued, aren't they? I mean, that's that's pretty obvious. But the whole festival's gone down, so they're going to be exposed to that liability for the entire festival, all the tickets and the fees for the other bands and so on. I can imagine that there's there's going to be a lot of debate about who's responsible for that. But but really, it's like um, that as a singer, you go to those things in quite a bewildered state, and then when the when the truth dawns on you, you do find yourself angry you feel miss probably misrepresented probably misled and then you you just want to pull out of stuff but the point is you can criticize Matt Healy all you want but none of these critics have ever done anything for LGBT plus people in Malaysia they criticize him but what have they done nothing so I think we have to look at it in that perspective sure maybe he didn't do things perfectly right so this is a British uh, radio listener um, on LBC uh, commenting on the situation from a Western British perspective. Some, some of the tenor and tone and the language was wrong. Yeah, so that's kind of, it's almost the same thing that I observed really. It's like, it wasn't, maybe it wasn't put in, in a way that can be anything other than inflammatory, but this is an, an emotional and passionate individual on a stage with a microphone in his hand talking about something that he obviously cares about. Thanks to Matt Healy and the 1975 Millions of people, hundreds of millions of people around the world now know about the punitive laws in Malaysia against LGBT plus people. I can't remember anybody making any kind of gesture that got any kind of international publicity. It's all been covered up. And that's exactly what the Malaysian government wants. It wants silence, invisibility and no comment. Thank heavens, Matt Healy broke through that. That's it, isn't it? It's like everybody's talking about it now. I certainly wasn't aware of it before, but here we are. Everyone is now. Okay, so this is a, a, a non-Malaysian person discussing the arguments for and against. So this should be quite a balanced uh, view. I talk about. I found this on the 1975 subreddit. It's a list of various charities that help queer people living in Malaysia. So check all of those out. Now, one criticism I've heard is Maddie and the guys. They should have just played their songs, not spoken about anything, and then go off. 
and that they shouldn't question another country's policies because they're not from there. And it's like, okay, so he should just ignore everything that's going on over there. Play, you know, chocolate and a sound in all their songs. They're sort of put blockers on. It's like, okay, but there have been artists who have performed in countries with, with anti-queer laws who've got a lot of criticism for not saying anything. For example, when Beyonce performed in Dubai. For example, the amount of criticism she got was insane. Jesus, I mean, what do you do? I suppose you steer clear of those countries altogether if you want to avoid criticism, or is criticism really, is that the worst thing that can happen to you? You know, people were saying she shouldn't have taken her money, Beyonce should have... <laughs> yeah, that's really going to be a resounding argument for Beyonce, isn't it? Beyonce, you shouldn't, you shouldn't take that money. She went, what, this money? No, 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 this is... Just Beyonce should have said something. It's like, okay, so if an artist says something, it's problematic. But if an artist chooses not to say anything and just perform their songs, again, it's problematic. I would say, at least here in America, it's a very conservative talking point to say artists shouldn't talk about politics. It's like, okay, so if we're using the same argument from earlier, then non-American artists shouldn't be able to say anything about gun control or drag bans, reproductive rights, because they're not American. For me, that doesn't make any sense. I think anyone should be able to criticize or question policies that they find problematic. So is this the freedom of speech argument then? So you should be able to express, well, anything. <laughs> your point of view. That's it. Your point of view. Oh, God, it's really complicated, isn't it? Okay, so then this guy <clears throat> has an alternate perspective. Okay, I was born in Malaysia. I'm also a part of the LGBTQ community, and I live in the United States. I've seen both sides of this. I want to give my opinion on this. There's just so much shit about like, oh my god, Matt Lee did an amazing thing for the Malaysian queer community by standing up for like the rights and standing up for like what's right and wrong. No, Matt Healy, you're a f***ing idiot. That is a str- <laughs> Wow. Any idea what the repercussions of the situation is? Do you have any idea how difficult it is for queer people to exist now? So with that legislation that's in place, raising awareness of it is, I suppose, the the thinking, the theory being that it's just going to make things worse, you know? I don't know. It's weird because it's, it is like, a, oh, I don't know. Let's, let's see what you This situation has set a precedent for now. Forget about what this does for the entertainment industry. Oh, my God. We're probably not going to get shows for at least a couple months after that. That is a good point, actually. That, that probably means that they won't risk... Um, Allowing performers like Matty Healy onto the stages in Malaysia because they'll say stuff like that. They fear that it may have started a trend that exposes their, uh, um, you know, controversial policies. You have shown the power of Malaysian authority when it comes to this shit. You said yourself, I don't, you didn't even look into it. I hate this bullshit white savior complex of people coming into regions like Southeast Asia with no prior research whatsoever to what the culture is like, to like what the repercussions of certain things are, come in and do this shit and then ruin it for not them, but for people that actually live there. You'll see very similar practices in other Muslim countries, for example, I'd say the UAE, Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran, etc. Where when legislation like this is threatened by especially people from foreign countries, they tend to act out irrationally, I'd say, at least in my opinion, but the, even despite the irrationality, it's still the government and they can do whatever they want. And so I, sp I think he's suggesting that uh, it makes the situation worse, right? Creates a situation where to get banned, people get banned, and it just becomes way more difficult to book acts. Okay, so just in terms of putting stuff on, that, you know, I, I actually think that's... I didn't think of that before, but I think that's actually a, a real possibility that even if like um, large scale entertainment events are are not banned, I think promoters are going to be really reluctant to put something on if there's a potentially volatile situation like this one. To have them come and perform is... So yeah, people just probably aren't going to play in Malaysia for a while. That's a good point. But there are laws, right? There are laws. What's that saying? When you, when you go to Rome, do as the Romans do? So when you come to a different country, Respect what the situation is, irrespective of whether you like it or not. We'll come to America, right? Okay, this is a good point, actually. When you go to America, there's certainly like a, a different level of scrutiny at the border, for a start. Um, we all know why that is, but um, at the same time, it's kind of like uh, you never feel welcome as such, and you are obliged to sort of behave in a certain way. Oh, this, this is 
<laughs> this is a good point. And we like, we have to follow as Americans do. This you do have to, yeah, you have to observe the laws of whatever country you visit, don't you? Otherwise, you get stuck there for quite a long time, from what I've read. Same situation. Everyone says that same saying. When you're in Rome, do as the Romans do. But white people can come into our country, say whatever they want, and tell you there's no consequences. Are you out of your fucking mind, bro? This has happened before, and let me tell you what happened. Nothing changes. You make things worse for the people that live there. You cause headaches. That's a really... He has a strong opinion and he's declaring it in a passionate way. I think it's, things, there's some truth in it though, isn't there? Like, I, I think the point you made about America is really salient. But many in the Malaysian LGBTQ plus community are unhappy with what he did. Carmen Rose is a Malaysian drag queen. I think there is a right place and time to do that and how you deliver the message that he delivered. I wonder what that would be, actually. I mean, it's probably not on stage when you're expected to play songs. Maybe. Is, that, is that what Carmen Rose is suggesting? And it was very obvious that he was intoxicated and he... Okay, so being intoxicated is part of the Matty Healy experience isn't it i mean like that's what we want to see him do he's uh, he's a rock and roller and a trickster as i've formally discussed wasn't in the right space to do that what he did was not just having this pro lgbt message but also behaving very unruly by destroying the organizers drones spitting on stage drinking okay sometimes i do spit on stage as well but i usually spit upwards catch it and then rub the back of my neck with it you know just keeps the mosquitoes away the, the, the message he was conveying, his support for the LGBTQ community, something that he, as a foreigner, can say on a very public forum in a way that, for example, you on a very public forum couldn't. Mm -hmm. So based on the video I watched online, the way he said it and the way he delivered it, I think it's very performative. Okay, well, performative... You could argue that, yeah, um, a British white man who's supposedly straight kissing the bass player is always going to be performative, but it doesn't change the message, does it? Does it? Do you, I mean... Very, it's giving white saviour complex. Oh, the white saviour complex. Shit, okay. If you level a criticism like that at a person, then anything they say is going to be completely undermined. But yeah, I mean, if, if you feel like it, you, I don't, yeah. And he wasn't doing it for our community because if he was doing it for our community, he would know what the consequences we would have to go through. I don't think he cares about us, but himself. Wow. The message that he's trying to send, but it wasn't a very good message. What do you think consequences could be then? Right now, state elections is around the corner and the politicians are going to use this as a scapegoat or it gives them like more ammo to further their homophobic agenda to gain votes, to pander to the conservative society. And uh, because of the unruly nature in which you delivered that message, maybe? Maybe that's like, is that like an example of why they're right to have those policies in place in the first place. And this is something that we've been through before, and it's nothing new, but what Matt Healy did was, I think, if it does open the doors for the government to discriminate and prosecute us. When Matt Healy kissed the bass player, Ross MacDonald, on mm -hmm. stage, it sounds from the social media recordings of that moment like there was a large cheer in the crowd. They, they were happy to see this. Yes. Yes, they were. I saw the chair and I was also like, okay, it sounds good and nobody booed, but there's a difference between the government's reaction and the people's reaction. Our <laughs> well, that's a big problem, isn't it? Sentiment for the queer community is not the same as the government's sentiment. But because this is being seen online and the majority of the people living in Malaysia are conservative, it's going to be bad for us because the government is not on our side. So what is the right thing to do? Is it to refuse to perform in any countries that have policies you disagree with? Some people say that isn't fair on the fans. Or do you consult activists in those countries before you perform there to see how best to align with them in a way that 
that's actually helpful. I don't even think I don't think there's an unanimously there's no there's no way to please everybody in those situations anyway, obviously. But it's obvious that there was a, a spur of the moment thing, um, and their criticisms aimed at Matty, um, that he's just being performative and doesn't care. But I don't think you can argue that he doesn't care. He obviously cares. He was furious. He was really angry about it. I mean that's obvious. Would someone else like Beyonce have received the same amount of criticism as Matty if they'd done the same thing? I mean, it's hard to imagine Beyonce doing that, actually, isn't it? After that, d the Dubai in, in, um, episode that we touched on earlier. I think for some people, the the music, the the, well, the touring arts is is very much a business endeavor, and I don't think it's like that for the seventy for the nineteen seventy five. I think I feel like they've um, they're really determined to to create a, 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 a much more artsy aesthetic around the gig itself. It's not just a cash-in. It's more like a, an expression of, you know, it's, it's something else, isn't it? It's like they're, they're not operating within the normal sort of musical parameters of you book a gig, you find the most cost-efficient way of doing it, and you take as much money as possible because you don't know how long you're going to be able to do that for. Um, that isn't how the 1975 do things, and that's actually one of the reasons why they've been such an enduringly successful band they haven't been around that long but they're fucking at the top all the time and people are always talking about the stuff they do this is another example of that but it's, it doesn't seem like a, a business strategy it could be a really costly endeavor but it has raised awareness about something that he obviously cares about is it better to keep your mouth shut though and not say anything um you get a bit less grief but um you'll be allowed in places like that i suppose you'd be allowed i don't know you just might make Make your life a little bit easier, I suppose. But nothing worthwhile is ever easy. This is such a nuanced and uh, ch challenging topic. Not like anything we've ever discussed on here before. Use the comment section to let me know what you think. God, yeah. I mean, I suppose you can boil it down to this. Activism. Should we be doing it? Or should we just be playing the songs and chilling? <laughs> I don't know. It's really, really hard. Yeah. You're not always aware of the stuff that you're walking into. I mean, you can go into a situation where playing a particular song is a faux pas because there's, you know, perhaps one of the local soccer teams has an allegiance to that particular song and then the other one doesn't and you end up in all sorts of trouble. That's a much milder and less important issue. But you know what I'm talking about. This, like, unless you really do your homework and tread carefully across the globe, I mean, there's... What's that expression? What the world is just got lots of different places that do different stuff all the time, and you got to be yeah. That's I've forgotten it now. Justin Hawkins rides again, again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Watch one of these two videos, and please, I invite you to uh, join the discussion here in the comments. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you very much. See you later. Cheers. Okay.